Welcome to Incredible Idaho. I'm Jack Hemingway. Tonight, we'll introduce you to a truly native Idahoan, found only in the west central part of our state, the northern Idaho ground squirrel. A peaceful mountain meadow at the edge of a forest, something most of us take for granted. The soft morning breeze carries the heady scent of wildflowers. A few majestic old pines are scattered throughout the landscape, providing sanctuary for the songbirds as they fill the air with their music. Insects buzz about, backlit by the warm sun. A tiny brook, fed by mountain snows, meanders through the lush green grass. Here today, but only a memory by midsummer. It's an idyllic scene, but one that was slowly disappearing from our state. That is, until now. In our country, we've, we've suppressed fires for between 70 and 100 years. And the suppression of fires, um, for good economic reasons, uh, has also resulted, though, in the shrinking of meadow habitats. And creatures that live in meadows, such as these ground squirrels, have then been, uh, the, their habitat has been shrunk and isolated. Paul Sherman is a professor at Cornell University in New York. And there is our Idaho ground squirrel, Spermophilus bruneus bruneus. Okay, Tom, we got one. He and his colleague, fellow professor Tom Gavin, know a lot about ground squirrels and ground squirrel habitat. Okay, so I'll mark it and you'll write down the data. Yep. They've been coming to Idaho for years to study these animals. Let's check on the sex first. Idaho's do that when very special. It, it has more species of ground squirrels than any other state in the Union. So you have seven species here. And this Idaho squirrel is the least known of all those species, and that's why I got started studying its behavior. Okay, we've got an adult male. The scientists have been capturing squirrels at a site on private land where there seems to be a healthy population of the animals. Then they're moving them to places like this, newly created meadow habitats where the northern Idaho ground squirrel probably once flourished. These are uh, fish fingerling tags, and uh, we use them for uh, marking mammals. and. Uh, We'll put them right in the ears, and then when we catch the animal again, we keep a record of that and uh, look up the animal, and we can tell the uh, population it's from and when we marked it, of course, and its weight at the time, etc. So this is our permanent record. And this animal will be uh, C267, and we'll put one tag in each ear. So in a natural ecosystem, Meadows are created when forest fires burn through at regular intervals. The bigger trees survive, only showing the effects of the fire on their lower branches. Some smaller trees and underbrush are cleared by the fire, allowing for the growth of native grasses and forbs, the primary food source for the northern Idaho ground squirrel. When fire is suppressed, these habitats begin to disappear. Then the wildlife populations that depend on meadows for survival can become scarce and isolated. Yeah, this is the area we probably, one of the areas we put the squirrels in last year. You can see they're starting to take up residence. Here's, a, I mean, not an active burrow, but certainly one that's been used uh, within the last year. You could say that this beautiful meadow is man-made. It was created by the Payette National Forest with funding from the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Wildlife Forever, and the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. First, the trees are thinned and the debris underneath is removed. This prevents the sort of catastrophic fire that occurs when fuel builds up in a forest that hasn't been burned at natural intervals. Then the area is torched in a controlled burn that imitates the fires of nature. The result, a mountain meadow, perfect habitat not only for the northern Idaho ground squirrel, but also a home for badgers, wild turkeys, okay. elk, and other wildlife. Zero on the left, okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is weigh this animal. And uh, to do that, we put it in a bag and roll it up like a burrito and then uh, hang it from a uh, hanging uh, scales. The researchers have marked and moved 90 squirrels over a two-year period with help from the Idaho Department of Fish and Game and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. With the squirrel in it, and we get a total weight of squirrel and the bag of 228 grams. 228. So he's already starting to fatten for hibernation. He's, he's, that's a big squirrel. This squirrel weighs a little over six ounces. Adults must double their body weight, and pups have to triple it in the short three months that they're above ground. By August, they'll have disappeared. 
escaping the heat and dried vegetation by burrowing beneath the earth. They'll emerge again next April, eager to breed and repeat the cycle. So this is Lady Clairol blue black hair dye. The dye is applied to the shoulders of each captured squirrel, so the researchers can easily identify them at a distance. Once the dye has dried, the animal is ready for release. All right, Tom, so where is that cage? <laughs> yeah, there's an enclosure right over here on the edge of the sagebrush. The pen serves as protection for the squirrel while it adjusts to its new surroundings. He likes that aspect. Inside, Paul places straw for nesting material and a carrot and dog food for nourishment. You know, also you'll see that there are two holes that were dug in here with a power auger. And these holes are each uh, drilled at about a 45 degree angle and about a half a meter deep, maybe a foot and a half deep. And these are just starter holes just to give the squirrel a place to go. And then presumably the squirrel will renovate those burrows the way they want. In March of 1998, the Northern Idaho ground squirrel was proposed for federal listing under the Endangered Species Act. This means a decision must be made within a year whether to officially list the animal. Take it off, and uh, that's our process. It could be back up in 10 minutes once we back off. Um, it's hard to say, but. Within seconds, the squirrel has disappeared. If it survives, it will be an indicator of a healthy meadow habitat and evidence that the efforts at restoration are working. Okay, squirrel, good luck. Perhaps in time, an abundance of mountain meadows will once again wind through our forests and the wildlife that depends on them will flourish. <laughs>